I'm going to ask you a kind of serious question here. A question that, you know, I ponder myself from time to time as I start to, as I get older and I start to uh, become more aware that my days are numbered, that at some point that we all leave this place, right? That we all have an appointed time, appointed second. That we will depart from. I'm not trying to bring you down, but it's going to happen. <laughs> we all have that uh, have that time, right? And, and, and I started to wonder. I said, you know, what will they? You know, I know I went up here before God. I don't have to give an accounting for my life there, but I wonder what people, how people will account for me here, as my friends and family gather and they try to conjure up words and memories to tell stories about my life and, and, and what it either meant or didn't mean to them or, you know, what, what will they say? You know, they say, well, he was a good husband. I mean, uh, well, he would, they say he was a good father. You know, they say he was a generous man. Was he a selfish man? What, what will they say? You know, and, and I start, you know, wondering, you know, am I giving them something to say? You know, what, what exactly is it, is it going to be that I'm remembered for? You know, we're all here for a little time, and, and, it, and it, it's not something that we like to think about. But perhaps we do need to think about it. Is that what is the legacy that we'll leave? How will we, we be remembered? Will it be for good things, or will it be for things maybe not so pleasant? You know, we try to remember the good in people oftentimes, and, but you'd be surprised how many times that people struggle to come up with a memory when asked, when asked them to give me a memory of, of a loved one, how oftentimes they struggle with that very thing. A couple of, uh, I ran across a poem uh, written by Linda Ellis a, a few years back, and I think I've shared it with you once before in the sermon, but I want to re reshare it with you because I think it, it kind of covers exactly what um, I'm talking about here, and it'll be a reminder for those of you who have uh, who've heard it, but for those of you who haven't, you may uh, listen to the words. I invite you just to listen to the words. Okay? It's called The Dash. Maybe you've heard it before. It goes something like this. I read, <clears throat> excuse me, I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came her date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For the dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth. For it is it, it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. There are things, if, are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. We could just slow down, if we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, Remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? It's kind of wake up, isn't it? And you start to think about that, how you spend your dash. In today's scripture reading, we hear from the Apostle uh, Paul, and he's writing a letter 
to Timothy, and he is near the end of his life. And he makes a very profound statement. He says, I, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You know, usually when I read those words, I read them at a funeral. You ever heard them at a funeral? That's the most often times where I read that. It's usually as we're trying to remember someone's life. We're trying to honor someone's life. We're saying that they, they lived a good Christian life and, and, and what God holds for them in the next step is that crown of righteousness, which he talks about earlier. But there's a calming nature to that, isn't there? There's a calming nature to that reading. And the reason that is, is because it's spoken from a man who's confident in what he has done. In other words, he has already lived his life, and he realizes it's coming to an end. But he also realizes that he lived a life of faith, that he was committed to his Lord and to his Savior, that his life was well lived, that he did all he could do, and now it was coming to an end. And he knew what awaited him, was that crown of righteousness on the other side. And he had a peace about it. And perhaps that's why we read it at, at funerals. Because it kind of gives us a peace. <laughs> Knowing what awaits us on the other side. Is that crown of righteousness. But you know, Paul didn't live that life by accident. He was committed. He was focused. His focus was on God. You know, it didn't start off like, like most of us. It didn't start off that way, right? There was Saul before there was Paul, right? And, and God had a plan for, for, for Saul, and Paul lived it out, right? He was very committed to what he was doing. And I have to wonder, and I have to look at myself sometimes, and I ask that question, am I that committed? Am I just committed on Sundays? Or Mondays? Maybe Sunday, Monday. How about Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Maybe we can take Wednesday off. You know, are we that committed to living that life? Do we keep our focus on God? Do we have a commitment towards the goal? You know, you know when the, when the, the pioneers set out, and some, some, none of you that are. But when the pioneers set out, and they wanted to, to discover the West, right? They were setting out for a new life, right? They faced all kinds of difficulties, didn't they? Right? There was disease. They didn't know where the water was going to be. They didn't, weren't sure what awaited them around the corner. There might have been thieves, bandits. There might have been Indians. There were all kinds of dangers were set before them, but yet they persevered. Why? Because they had a goal. They had a dream where they wanted to be. Right? I have a dream too. Where I want to be. Where I want to end up is sitting in heaven with my, my God. That's my dream. And there's going to be some, what? Rough roads. There's going to be some adversaries. There's going to be some disease and some sickness. And there's going to be some letdowns and some heartache. But ultimately, my goal is to keep my eyes on the finish line. Right? The prize. And I said over here, the prize. That crown of righteousness. My goal is to keep my eyes focused on my God. And not let the devil of the details get between me and him. Right? That's the first step of being a successful person is to have a goal. Right? It doesn't. People don't get to the Olympics by accident. Right? You just don't end up running the 100 yard dash in the Olympics because you just showed up. It just doesn't happen, does it? If you want to be a good shot, if you want to be a marksman or an expert, what do you do? You go out there and practice, practice right? Right. How do you think a bass, somebody who shoots a basketball well gets to be good at that? One shot at a time. Right? You go out there, you shoot, you miss, you shoot again. You shoot, you miss, you shoot again. You shoot, you miss, you shoot again. You shoot again. You may be, oh, what did I do right that time? I'm trying to remember what I did. And, and you work on it, right? Nobody gets there by accident. We don't become successful people by accident. We have to set priorities and goals in our life. And one of our goals in our life should be who? 
serving our God. Right? Not only should it be one of our goals, it should probably be our number one goal. Right? Those things don't happen by accident. You have to have a priority. You have to set something up before you, right? Because if you don't have priorities, then you're just all over the place, right? You might have good intentions, but you're here, there, here, and there. Right? The thing about priorities is that you've got to have one and then stick to your priorities, right? If I asked you, and I won't because we don't have time for that, but if I asked you to fill out a list, give me your five top priorities in your life. How long would it take you to write that? Probably not long, right? You, you probably know what they are. I would hope God's in there somewhere, maybe family, you know, job. I don't, I don't know. But everybody's got different stuff. But I hope, I hope you know, it probably won't take you long to, to, to write them out. And most of you would probably be in pretty much the same order, surprisingly enough. Within, within maybe the top couple might change, depending on your thinking. But then what I would ask you to do, and, and don't do it, you know, not, not never, but when you get home, let me write those five down somewhere. But then I want you to get out your schedule, you know, thing that keeps you on track, the calendar. And I want you to look at that. And I want you to see how well that calendar matches up to your priorities. You say, well, I want God to be first. Let's say I got God on Sunday between 10 and 11, 12, 10 and 12, 10 and 12. God, 10 and 12 on Sunday. And he's a priority in my life. Start the week off right, in church, in Sunday school, great. Pow, we're off to a good start. Come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, Sunday's back around. We can go back to church. We'll start off again. God doesn't want to be a priority on Sunday from 10 to 12. God wants to be a priority all the time. Amen. We need to be starting our days off with time and prayer. Time set aside for God. You know, it's important that we get first things first. You know, let me give you an example. I, I used to coach softball because you know, my daughter was big in softball and I coached softball. And I remember there was this young lady and, and she never hit a home run in all of her life. But she hit this shot to, to, to left right field and the girl wasn't to the fence. But the girl come, comes running and she dives for it and she misses it. And here's my girl. <laughs> She's hustling now. She's on her way to second, and the third base coach is saying, come on, come on. That ball's rolling to the fence. Come on, come on. And she's running. And she's getting it, getting it. And all of a sudden, they're saying, well, she might make it up. Send her. Woo! And he sends her. Her eyes get this big. I mean, she's excited. She's running, running, running. And she slides in. No throw from too far out there. Safe. Teammates. Ah, they're going crazy. Ah. She hit his arm run. So crazy that they didn't even notice the first baseman saying, throw me the ball, throw me the ball, throw me the ball. And the catcher threw the ball, and the girl touched first base, and she was out. Uh -huh. Because she didn't touch first base. Sometimes we get so excited about things, we forget to take care of first base. You see, it don't matter what you did after that, because if you didn't touch first base, Right? We focus on the wrong things sometimes, don't we? We can focus on all the busyness in life and forget to concentrate and focus on God, right? There was a, there was a picture, an Instagram picture that went around a few years ago. And went crazy, people showing it, but it was of a whale. You saw this whale uh, uh, coming up. It was a humpback whale. It was coming up. It was a beautiful picture of a whale. But that wasn't what was made it go crazy. Was right behind that whale coming up was a was a man sitting on a sailboat, looking at his iPhone. <laughs> now the area this picture was taken in was an area known where people go to whale watch, to watch for whales coming up and yeah, observe them. And there was a series. This guy who posted this picture, um, I, I can't remember his name, and I apologize. Um, Took like, showed like five different pictures. And five different pictures, the whale's coming up, this guy's. You know, how often times are we like that guy? We're so busy looking at our phones that we're missing light going by, right? 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 You know what I'm talking about? Maybe I say a phone, but maybe it's something else in your life, you know? 
And we're concentrating on these all these other things that we miss what God has for us. These wonderful things appear with well, Look what's on Facebook. You know, and we miss what God has for us. We need to be focused on living a life for God. We need to be focused on seeing where what his plan is for our life and then meeting him there and fulfilling that plan. That's what Paul did. I'm sure Paul went places he didn't want to go. I'm sure Paul did things like, ooh, this is really dangerous. <laughs> you know? But he did it because God called him to do it. Right? He had a mission. He had a vision to spread the gospel, and he did. And he did. You know, there was a young man who went to um, Amherst College, I believe, and soon after moving in, he put a V over his doorway. And he would never tell anybody what that V stood for. And people used to make fun of him all the time about the V that was over his doorway. What is all that? You know, what's all that about? What's all that? Four years later, at graduation, he gave the valedictorian speech. And that's what that meeting was for. He had set his goals early, and he had a reminder every day when he walked out that door. What was important to him was to be the valedictorian. What was important to him was to give that speech. That was his goal. Now I ask you, what's over your door? What is it that you go out there to serve every day? Is it money? Is it pride? Do we have M, a big M up there? Pride? What is it? What is it that draws you out to the world? What is it that you strive?